Uh, one of the questions from Ethan, what do you think of the President's remarks tonight about cutting the deficit? And uh, Ethan, as I uh, referenced, I believe what the President said is really not addressing uh, the problem of the deficit. Uh, in fact, I go back that a year ago he indicated concern about the deficit, and, and you would think if you were concerned about the deficit that it, the deficit would not have increased. But actually, uh, by the spending bill, uh, which uh, just yesterday the Congressional Budget Office said was understated by $75 billion. Um, and th this is just uh, so irresponsible. Uh, and then we know, um, all of you can remember that we had the circumstance of uh, recovery.gov, which is the uh, official website of the U.S. government that reported fake congressional districts, fake jobs in South Carolina. They reported that we had 43 congressional districts. Uh, South Carolina has six. Uh, and then in the 43rd district of South Carolina, it reported $3.1 million being spent creating no jobs. And so uh, the jobs have not been created. Uh, we know that. Uh, and a better way to do that is across the board cuts, uh, reducing um, taxes uh, so that small businesses can grow, can create jobs. And that's how you cut the deficit. And uh, another question, uh, Leah, uh, I heard Nancy Pelosi disagrees with Obama and thinks we need to freeze military spending too. How would you fight that and back the president up? And uh, it, it is uh, amazing to see uh, the disagreements between uh, the leading Democrats of our country. Uh, ever since uh, the victory by Scott Brown uh, last week in Massachusetts, uh, it, it's been um, an interesting situation of Democrats accusing each other of uh, duplicity, of, uh, of uh, not pushing hard enough here, pushing too hard there. But what uh, Ms. Pelosi proposed uh, indicates that, uh, first of all, she was against, uh, I believe, a freeze, and many of the people in the conference were. Uh, but then they said, well, if there's a freeze, it must be on the military, too. Well, uh, that, that's not uh, r realistic. The, uh, I believe that the primary focus and function of the national government is national defense. And uh, we must be conditions based on national defense. Uh, we have an enemy uh, who are determined, as we saw uh, by the uh, al-Qaeda efforts uh, on Christmas Day. We have an enemy determined to destroy our country and destroy our way of life. And we must have a military uh, which is capable of facing the challenge, whatever it is. And so you wouldn't freeze uh, the military. In fact, I'm very grateful. The very first bill that I introduced this year was to provide for a pay increase uh, for our troops, 1.9%. Uh, uh, I, I am so supportive of what our troops are doing, what our veterans have done to make America safer. And so I, I'll be working for the strongest national defense possible. Another question, uh, Tamara, uh, has asked, if health care reform is so great, why are Congress, the President, and Vice President, and unions not required to be part of it? And Tamara, you, you revealed uh, one of the inconsistencies um, that I tried to work on. And I was very grateful. I want to give credit to the uh, Hilton Head Island Republican Club. Uh, in August, I spoke to the club. And uh, I was very impressed by their enthusiasm. Uh, they did everything but heckle me. Uh, and that is that uh, during the course of the meeting, uh, they kept asking why shouldn't the health care um, provisions apply to members of Congress? And the more they asked the question, uh, the more I realized, hey, you're right. And so when I got back to Congress, I met with uh, Congressman John Fleming, uh, a member of, uh, he's a doctor himself uh, from Louisiana. He had introduced legislation that provided that if the government option were in place, that members of Congress must and members of administration must take the government option. And so I was very pleased to introduce that as an amendment uh, on the health care takeover bill as it was in the Education and Labor Committee. We were able to get it passed. And I wish I could tell you that it was due to um, my extraordinary ability to convince people of um, how uh, the, the merit of the bill. But what happened was that um, actually uh, the Democrats uh, on the other side, uh, many of them had left the committee. Uh, I was very proud. No Republican did. And so uh, inadvertently, we actually had a majority. Uh, so we passed it. Sadly, when the bill came up in the House, they had deleted the mandatory provision that, uh, sh that members of Congress shall take 
the uh, health care um, bill or benefits, uh, and they changed the word to may. In other words, it was an option. It was an opt out, not a mandatory provision, and so it was an exemption. Um, and so uh, it, it really is, I think, a sad commentary uh, of, of a level of hypocrisy uh, by uh, members of Congress that they would propose something for the general public but not for themselves. And we, we will persist on that. Next, we have uh, Evan. Uh, what's it going to take to get the government to stop doing things for us already? And, and, and that's uh, really a basic question um, to me. And as I indicated, uh, I, I've been active in the political process um, all my life. And uh, I've, I've always supported the principles of limited government against uh, big government. And so when, um, Evan, you point out about stopping government uh, from uh, doing things for us already, uh, to me, government should be limited. And we learned this from Ronald Reagan. It should be limited to do uh, for us what we can't do for ourselves. Uh, what it, and, and so government should be limited. Uh, it shouldn't be doing everything for everyone. Uh, and uh, it was somewhat startling tonight as the president was describing the health care bill. It almost sounded like everything for everyone for free. Um, and, and that's just uh, uh, not correct and, and, and not in the interest uh, truly of the American people. It will cause what we saw with the cash for clunkers program. And that is that uh, the program will, will be overwhelmed. Uh, and it's one thing to be delayed in getting a car. It's even uh, one thing to be delayed for the dealerships to be paid. But if we have a health care system where the uh, finite number of doctors and nurses and medical facilities are overrun uh, by persons who think that they're going to get free care, um, it, people will lose their lives. This is truly an issue of life and death. And uh, it, it's um, one that should be addressed very seriously. That's why uh, we have a very good bill, and I, I appreciate Dr. Tom Price with the Republican Study Committee that we have an excellent bill that provides for affordability and accessibility.